We've officially been living in the cottage for two weeks now without a kitchen. But this week that all changes from appliance deliveries and DIYing our custom island to finally getting our countertops installed, our kitchen is really starting to come to life. Hello guys, welcome back to the cottage. I can officially say our home. We are living here. There's stuff everywhere. But today was a very exciting day. We got our refrigerator delivered. We got our hood uh, for the range delivered. We also got the blower for that delivered. The only things that aren't in for the kitchen in terms of appliances are the range, the oven, all in one unit. Um, that is on its way from Italy, <laughs> um, but it is not arrived yet. So it takes six to eight weeks in transit. So it is on its way. I think it's been on its way for about three weeks now. Also, we had an issue with our dishwasher. Um, it got damaged in transit. So I'm going to pick another one um, and from a floor model. So we are gonna get that pretty soon. We're doing very exciting things in the kitchen this week. Our plumber's here, we've been working on all of that stuff underneath the island and i want to diy our island hopefully our countertops are coming next week cross your fingers with me i'm not sure you will if they do happen you will see them in this video one of you guys also told me that it's a really good idea to prime the walls with primer paint behind your cabinet so that it doesn't absorb any of the like cooking spells and i was like that's a great idea we need to do that. Since we didn't have any of these attached to the wall because we're still working on the floors, we were able to take all of the cabinets away, prime them, Romeo and I just primed the back wall. We're only gonna paint the portions of the wall that's actually going to be seen around the cabinetry um, just so that we don't waste any. I've already been working my there's a pencil in my hair if i don't put it in my hair i'll lose it so i've already been hard at work today as you can see there's a large silver transformer like thing behind me <laughs> it's our refrigerator but it's a built-in refrigerator so it doesn't look very pretty on the outside but she is very pretty on the inside it's a built-in fridge so it's time to build the casing for it um, and then also kind of attach it all in. And then when we get all of our cabinet doors, there's gonna be cabinet doors on the front. So it looks like cabinetry. Looking into the kitchen and on both sides of the windows, just being all cabinetry instead of a large kind of stainless steel fridge. Maybe if you have a French door opening, so we have two doors that open on the top and then one slide out on the bottom. It might be the same, but your fridge, we have a Miele fridge, but it comes with everything that you're gonna need to know. So it came with the specific measurements that I was gonna have to make the box opening with. And then it also tells me exactly what to measure for the, the dimensions of the cabinet fronts. So it makes it super easy to get what we need. I got all my pieces cut here. I'm building it the same way I built cabinetry. So I'm using pocket holes to assemble all of the pieces together. And I'm using my 90 degree angle clamps to make sure that everything is super square so it looks really finished and polished once the cabinet doors are on there and it does really feel and look like a piece of cabinetry. So we're gonna get this piece assembled and then put it into place and it will attach it to the wall so it's super secure.
installed. This is very exciting. It's semi-installed. It's secure to a certain point because we actually need, when my plumber comes back, he's bringing a adapter for the water line for the ice machine. That's the only real reason a refrigerator needs the water is if you have an ice machine or filtered water through it. We don't have filtered water um, through the Miele refrigerator, but uh, we do have an ice machine. One of the things that I loved about it was not only the way that it looks, loved the freezer baskets. They're wire instead of clear. I love its look. I love, I loved it. And also our meal at dishwasher got delivered. If you guys follow me over my vlog, you know that we had a little bit of a shipping problem with our last dishwasher. We waited for it for almost a year and it came in, it got delivered. It came into the port from Germany and it was damaged. We worked it out. I was able to get a floor model. Instead of like our refrigerator, which will be paneled with cabinetry, our dishwasher was also supposed to be like that. But since I got a floor model, it's just stainless steel. So here's my design for our DIY island. You can see the back, the front, and both sides. So it's really about making all of the things that we want in the island work. Um, so you can see the back has the most going on because that's where the majority of the stuff is and the cabinetry. Um, so our sink and the under counter for the sink is right in the middle. The space is evenly divided on each side. So on the right side from the back is going to be the dishwasher. And then on the left side is going to be the trash can because I do want a hidden trash can. And then whatever space is left, I just want to put three cabinets going down. And then on the front, this is where it's going to be solid and the view is going to be into the kitchen. And we're going to be repurposing the salvaged posts that we have from the front porch before we took it down and we're using those as the decorative feature, but also the support for the granite that's going on top. And then if you look at the island from both sides and on this side by the dishwasher, there was a little bit of space left over and I just didn't want it to be wasted. So the view from the dining room will look like this. I thought it would be pretty to kind of do a custom spice rack or decorative feature here, utilizing the approximately four inches in depth. So I'm gonna frame it out with a face frame and then we can do some cool shelves with gallery rods here on top and have some pretty custom feet on the bottom to make it look pretty coming from the dining room. And then the opposite side, I'm just gonna continue the detail that we're gonna be doing along the front, which is beadboard. I feel like since we have have beadboard on the ceiling. Beadboard was such a heavy kind of wood trim detail that was in the house to begin with. I felt like it made sense to continue the beadboard underneath, painted all the same color obviously, but beadboard underneath to give it some texture and then wrap the beadboard around to this side. So when you walk in from the back door, you'll you'll see that side and it'll be beadboard and it's a little better than what would I use, like plywood and just Paint it? I prioritized the sink cabinet the other day while my plumber was here and there was a lot going on. So I wanted a 36 inch white farmhouse style sink and I wanted it to sit out a little bit from the cabinetry facing to give it a little bit of, you know, detail and stuff. So this cabinet is essentially just like the others where you have a bottom, two sides, a back and support, but the support is a little different because it actually needs to support the weight of the sink. So what I did, created a two by four support system. And it's basically just a box that I put underneath and attached to the side cabinets. I used multi-surface screws to screw it in and it is very, very sturdy. It was when the old plumber really messed up this whole drainage system. What we had to do underneath was a little bit different. Um, ideally, you want storage underneath your sink. Well, there's only so much storage you can get underneath the sink because you also have the garbage disposal. So it's just kind of in the way. The drain was positioned too far forward, you know, into the, into the island, it was too far this way, but all of the drains, everything had been hooked up underneath the house and we had sealed stuff up. It was like, and we can utilize this storage on both sides, but I wasn't really concerned about losing the direct storage right underneath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna build walls like on each side and hide all of this. So when you open my cabinets, you're not even gonna see the garbage disposal. But what I am gonna do is kind of put like a faux door or something that hinges or something I can remove in case we do need to get to the garbage disposal and operate any of the water, stuff like that. I think the water will be attached to the back. So just kind of 
just like making this a little better. The sink portion is done. Now we have to build the rest. Right next to the sink on the right is going to be the dishwasher. So it's gonna sit here and to utilize that extra space in the 48 inches on this side, I'm gonna do that spice rack. So I think it's gonna be really pretty. So I started by cutting our cabinet grade plywood to the exact sizes that I needed. Unlike the cabinets that we've built already, the dishwasher portion isn't going to have a bottom because the dishwasher needs to sit flat on the floor. So we're just gonna do two sides, a back, and then two smaller pieces to kind of construct our spice cabinet sides. Just like we did with the other cabinets, I'm gonna be using a pocket hole maker and pocket hole screws. I really like this method of assembling the cabinets together because I have the most control and it's really easy to make pocket holes and keep everything perfectly square. Also to keep everything square, I use my 90 degree angle clamps, which are a absolute lifesaver. They have helped me build so many projects so far for this house. So I definitely recommend having these in your toolbox. Since we're using three quarters of an inch plywood, we need one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws to assemble the box together. When you get a pocket hole maker kit, it kind of comes with all of the tools that you really need to make the holes and to screw in all of the screws. Work in progress of a piece. This is what I have so far, and I want to see if it fits. Okay, she fits. What I am noticing here is that the dishwasher has a toe kick. I didn't think about that. I, you know, when you walk up, your toes can go underneath, so it's called a toe kick. I made its frame go all the way down to the bottom right here. You see this piece of wood right here? So I'm gonna cut it back and down, kind of cutting a notch out of it. Measure that and go ahead and cut that out with my jigsaw. I think this is gonna be so pretty for more decorative pieces and a spice rack. The space looks good. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a topper on it and then also a bottom so that we can have a toe kick there or something pretty there and then we can worry about the shelves after. And the dishwasher out of the way so that we can actually attach this thing. Oh, baby. That looks pretty decent. What do you guys think? <laughs> And then we'll just make sure it's all level and square. I've got it right and I've got it wrong. I learned my lesson hanging on. Come see me with me by the fire. And let it go for a little while. So be here as the night. Cannot stress to you guys enough that clamps are your friends. <gasps> they help you have like five more pairs of hands. Well, two, but a really strong pair of hands. So now that we have the cabinets built, I'm just building the simple base underneath the cabinets. This is helping us to level out our floors, get them all perfect, and then we can nail the cabinets into them. Um, this is also for the toe kick. So I'll put the measurements for mine on the screen. Um, your width is gonna be different depending on what you're building or how many cabinets you're gonna be setting on them. But the depth I feel like is good because we're gonna be doing some decorative feet, which I'm really excited about. Yeah, they're still using my 90 degree angle clamps and they help me just make everything super square. 
and so I make two long pieces the width that I want the frame to be and then my two shorter pieces are 16 and 3 quarters and I'm using these multi-purpose screws I'm using two and a half inch I feel like these go into everything I use them for everything in different lengths obviously this side will have the two by four toe kick which is building more support for the granite basically. So the cabinets are only 23 and a quarter deep because then once we add the face frame, it brings it to 24 inches. We've gotta have more support for the granite to go on top. I plan on having bar stools on this side. And so when you sit down, decent leg room underneath the counter, but I'm kinda having to go um, with a specific measurement. So you see this wooden piece of plywood on the floor? So that was how we accessed the plumbing underneath the house. At least another 10 inches. 15 inch depth for your legs. How big is my legs? <laughs> From my stomach to my knees is 14. I can sit! You don't go all the way up to your stomach really. Um, we're just kind of like left with what we, what we have. We have to do, I have to come out 10 more inches. So we're gonna build framing out of two by fours. posts are gonna go. Attached to the cabinets, three quarters of an inch down. <laughs> Looks like we got an island. Okay, slimmed it down the three quarters of an inch on each side. And then we'll just use these, oh, we'll just use these not so pretty legs for right now so it keeps it level. I'm gonna screw this in using my multi. I use these screws for everything, you guys. It's starting to look like a real island, it's crazy. And I've never done this before, but it looks pretty good. Level. <laughs> so once upon a time in this renovation, when we demolished and took down our front porch, I saved it all. <laughs> of course I did. So this is where I put it all. At the time I didn't know what we would use, but I knew for sure that we were going to be using the posts for the island. That was one project I definitely wanted to do. But I know for a fact that they're not all the same. So here's one. And what was wrong with them was the bottom. Uh, was rotten away and compromised so we couldn't use them as the posts anymore so we have new posts for the front porch so it freed us up to actually use these for the island and I'm thinking three is a good decision so let's pull them all out and see which ones match and go from there Ugh. okay so we need 35 and a quarter so essentially I need to pick the exact portion of the post I want that fits into that measurement because we want a complete piece. The shape of the legs kind of tapered. This is fatter and this is skinnier. They need to be larger at the top and kind of go down to a point. I feel like that's the way it's gonna look uh, most flattering. <laughs> These two match, but this one is slightly different. And it's like, does it add character? So this is 35 and a quarter. Start it here having a little bit of a solid flat piece. It would start right here and go down 
to here. But I really like this part. This part's pretty. But maybe we could use that for something else. Getting really in there with my cleaning toothbrush and making them all nice and clean. I think. I definitely think we made the right choice on which portion of the posts to use because I like that they go narrower at the bottom. Then we have these. Technically we have four of these because we have the other one that was broken. Um, so we, I was thinking kind of something that came to my head was like candlesticks or we could put it on a little ottoman, maybe an, oh, maybe an ottoman for the living room. Like use the stubby part, like this part here and have that be the feet. So it could be like for, for furniture, but if you guys have any good ideas on what we can use these for, let me know in the comments what you think. Now is the first larger project that I'm actually buying or purchasing beadboard, which matches ours. The beadboard that is original to our house. It's actual three quarter of an inch wood and it has the bead in the center and right here on the end. And it's tongue and groove, so they slip in together so that they're a super tight fit and we just nail them in. You guys know it's all about the details for me. So I always like to think about how things join together or meet. So this is gonna be our little spice rack. And then I'm gonna have a two inch face frame that comes like straight, straight, straight here and then around to the front. But then the beadboard is gonna go here and then cut immediately back onto this platform. So it's underneath where you sit. And so where this comes over and meets, I wanted, I mitered the sides. So I cut it at a 45 degree angle. You can see that's a 45 degree angle so that when they meet, it has like a nice clean edge right here. So you know what it's like to be circling among the clouds. Cause without you by my side, I would be stuck here on the ground. Lighting up the way I can see the road ahead of me. I won't be stumbling in the dark. Your eyes are shining like the stars I was down Until you saved me Until you set me free My eyes were closed Now I see clear as day And I just wanted to say That you can take me high Feels like I can fly Take me high. So now we're gonna start working on the face frames. This is pretty simple. I just cut a whole bunch of two inch boards. So I mitered the edge so it's at a 45 degree angle here. And I'm matching it up on the edge. And we're gonna put a two inch face frame all the way around the top. And then we're gonna work on this side, kind of framing out the cabinet openings. Without you. Take me high Feels like I can fly You can take me high Feels like I can fly You can take me high you guys, I can't wait. So I got the island good enough for the countertops. It's not painted yet because I was like, should I paint it now? And then it's kind of like fresher paint. What if we mess it up? I was just like, I'm just gonna wait until after they do the countertops and then we'll paint after. Our island granite is coming, all the soapstone for the back wall, the coffee pantry, and both bathrooms are being installed today. They are on their way. Might be 
Okay, now that we're primed, let's talk paint color. I have obviously think a lot about everything we do in this house, but I have thought a lot about the island. And there were a couple of things to consider. Obviously, we had to consider the other colors that we're doing in the house, not just in the space, but like kind of trickling throughout the house so that every space is really cohesive. I also wanted to take into consideration that I really don't want this house to be matchy 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 like i don't want to use the same colors but rather complementing colors and contrasting colors in some ways throughout the house to give each space its own identity its own character i first kind of like thought okay we could do it pashmina we did all of the wainscoting in this space open concept from the dining room to the back door in pashmina the coffee pantry is pashmina uh, but then it would be all pashmina. <laughs> it would be all that kind of like warm gray, which is really beautiful, but it would be all the same color. It would also be all the same plain. You know, the wainscoting is that height, you know, three feet up, up the wall. And then the island would be three feet and like all the cabinets would be three feet. And it was just all the bottom of the room would be pashmina in the same color. So I was like, I don't think I want that. Um, my original plan in my head in designing this house, I wanted the island to be like rich wood tone. And also that would be matchy matchy. We would bring the wainscoting from the other space, the living room into this room. And then also the table and everything in the open concept dining room is also that color. So it was just all starting to feel to me matchy matchy. Also, there was going to be kind of an issue with our our posts from our patio. I don't know how they're going to strip. I don't know if they're good wood. I don't, you know, that was going to be a whole nother process. Then I was like, I'm going to paint it black. <laughs> and my mom came over and we talked about it. I, let me look at inspiration pictures with black islands. And then I came across this inspiration picture. Kind of captured all of the colors that I'm really going for. The doors in the space kind of look like pashmina. The walls kind of look like gray mist, maybe a little different, but kind of look like it. The granite kind of sort of looks like our granite and it has a black island. And I was like, it, it made me feel more comfortable with the decision to paint our DIY island black. So that's what we're gonna do. We're still working in the kitchen. We're still going with the advanced line from Benjamin Moore, which is four cabinets. Um, it did really well when we painted the other color of the cabinets in Pajmina, and I really liked how it turned out and how durable it was. So we are doing that in black by Benjamin Moore, the same color that we did the windows. We're gonna be doing two coats of black for sure and lightly sanding in between and give it a nice, nice finish. Now, there are so many blacks that you could choose from. This color is obviously just called black from Benjamin Moore, but there's so many different colors of black and undertones of black that you could pick from. It could go more green or it could go more harsher or softer. This black by Benjamin Moore just was a soft black. 
it cut the edge off of it being so dark, but it just had some softness to it, which is why I picked it for the windows, truly. So that's why we used a darker primer. You ready? You can always change it, but you know, let's, yeah. Let's make sure we're making the right decision here, shall we? Something I didn't know before recently. I always knew you should tint your primer because it's better for a darker color not to go from stark white to um, dark. Um, but I always like, well, was like, why is it gray? And then someone at the paint store told me the reason that they do it gray is they don't want to put a lot of tint in the in the the primer because if they do, it loses its adhesive properties and the whole reason you want a primer. And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense that it's gray. So just if you were wondering why primer is tinted just to a gray color instead of all the way to black, I guess. That's why. I'm using a combination of a brush and a roller because the beadboard has those ridges. I tried a couple of different rollers and they just don't really get into all those cracks really well. So I kind of go over it with a brush in the grooves first and then I go back over it with the roller and smooth it all out. black it looks incredible holy cow it's like so androgynous i feel like i feel like it's the perfect mix between romeo and i it has some like like heaviness and like depth to it um and then once we bring in all of the other elements it's just going to like further bring this space to life which is crazy i absolutely love it So this space right here is gonna have beadboard, but I'm leaving it open because we still need to put a few electrical things here. Let's talk about this little spice rack cabinet pretty spot here. My thoughts are I wanna stain this the rich wood tone. So this is the wood tone that's kind of throughout the house and the wainscoting and the living room and stuff. And we're tying it into this space too. So when I was thinking about our little spot spice cabinet that was really just a, a consequence of having a little more space and wanting to make it into something special. I think I wanna do inside, I wanna stain it this color so that it has, a, it's different um, and it brings some of that warmth onto the island as well. And you can see it from the dining room. So I wanna stain the inside 
and then also stain the shelves. So we need to figure, so next episode, we're gonna figure out where exactly we want the shelves to be. We're gonna stain this area. And also I want to put gallery rails on the shelves. I feel like it's gonna bring the brass in and it's really gonna make this little moment purposeful and a, a, just a really cool situation. So stay tuned for how the spice rack comes up. Another thing that we're gonna be doing on the island and also all the cabinetry is I'm gonna be custom making and cutting out pieces of wood that are kind of somewhat like furniture feet. Now that we have our color palette foundation down in terms of the cabinet color and the countertops, now we can bring in the warmth. We're gonna bring in the warmth in the spice cabinet. We're also gonna be pulling that same rich tone wood into the window boxes and the window trim. So it's gonna go up onto the walls here. Two beams are gonna run the length of the kitchen up there, which is going to be really pretty. My plan for the upper cabinets is to have some of the doors glass and to put and stain the rich tone wood inside the cabinets. So now we're bringing in the warmth. That's why I felt like black was just the way to go because we're gonna have all of these warm elements come into play. So you are not going to want to miss next episode as we continue to renovate and style and bring this space to life. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are not part of our family, hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload new renovation videos here and also over on my blog channel every week, two times a week over there so you get to see the behind the scenes and my reaction to getting our countertops on the vlog tomorrow. So be sure to check that out too and I will see you guys again next week for another video. Bye guys. Oh, and next week we're going back into the guest bathroom because now that we have our countertops, we can finally decorate and finish her up. So that is gonna be now our second room that has been decorated and designed in this space to completion. Bye guys.